At the beginning of the film, we see news, which informs us that it is 1973. Some friends went to Texas to spend their holidays. They were attacked by a serial killer, and everyone was killed. Hammers and a chainsaw were used by the attacker. Sally, one of the girls, was one of the five who made it out alive. She has never said anything about the incident after she recorded her statement. In her statement, she mentions a man who has worn a human skin mask. That's why she couldn't see the man's real face. We are afterwards shown with a young lady named Lila. She asked about Sally from the Texas gas station on the herb. He tells her that Sally has been looking for the killer for 30 years, but she can't find him. Later, Lila's younger sister, Melody, arrives. Melody tells her that we should leave right now. Meanwhile, Herb inquires about their next destination. Melody says, Harlow. Herb says I heard about you and they depart after that. After coming out, Melody searches for her friend Dante. Dante appears and tells apparently, the bus took a wrong turn but we are back on track now. Dante and Melody had actually bought a town that was deserted. They want to show their investors that town because there was no development. As a result, they could begin their development. Dante's girlfriend Ruth was also present and a man arrived at the gas station with a gun. Melody makes a remark about the man. That man also responds to her and the four of them leave for the town they have just purchased. Meanwhile, on the way, the man at the gas station speeds up his car in front of them. As they continue on their journey, they meet two officers on the road. They stop them, investigate them, and one of the officers shows Dante his card. And it warns that this is a dangerous area and that if you need any help, you should contact us. They arrive in their town later and begin to plan the town's development. In the meantime, they meet across the man who greeted them at the gas station. Melody inquires of Dante as to why this man is here. He informs them that he is their contractor and his name is Richter. He will begin to work on the renovation soon. After Richter has left, they see a flag that has been set incorrectly. Dante and Melody enter the building in order to remove the flag. Meanwhile, they discover that this building was originally an orphanage. When Melody looked at the pictures that had been placed, she saw one of the pictures in which the child's face was invisible. Dante uses the window to try to remove the flag. But because his hands couldn't get there, he comes downstairs to tell Melody. Meanwhile, Mrs. McCumber appears and greets them, saying, You are welcome in my home. They both become shocked after seeing her because they believe no one lives here. That Mrs. McCumber takes them to a seat and serves them tea. She explains that she used to head an orphanage in this town. Melody claims that the bank has taken possession of the property, and how could you live here despite this? That Mrs. McCumber informs them that she has given the bank all of the money. After that, she owns the property, which Dante couldn't believe. That Mrs. McCumber informs Melody that this flag belonged to her grandfather and was his last memento. Meanwhile, a giant man stands on the ladder, and Melody is terrified of him. That Mrs. McCumber tells him not to worry since everything is good here. After hearing this, that man leaves. Then Mrs. McCumber informs Melody that this is the orphanage's last child, and she continues to look after him even now. Meanwhile, Dante had called the police to the scene. When the officers arrive, they tell Mrs. McCumber to leave. That Mrs. McCumber gets a heart attack after hearing this. Later, that gigantic man appears and takes his mother in his arms. The officials inform them that the old lady has to be taken to the hospital. Ruth accompanies those officers so that she can help Mrs. McCumber. The giant man was staring at Melody as the officers got into their cars. He was enraged at her. The flag is thrown down by the Richter, and the giant man rags even more. Meanwhile, investors arrive, and they begin to show them around. At the same time, Mrs. McCumber died while being taken to the hospital. After seeing her, that giant man begins to cry because he believes she is his own mother. He tries miserably to awaken his mother. After holding his hands, the office informs him that his mother has passed away. That giant man is ragged, and he violently breaks the officer's hand. When an officer attempts to shoot him, he bends his hand. The bullet then strikes another police officer who is driving, causing an accident. On the other hand, Melody was up for auction, and everyone was buying the land. Melody receives a message from Ruth while checking her phone. She informs her that Mrs. McCumber has passed away. Melody tells Dante this since Mrs. McCumber died as a result of them. Melody tells her sister Lila that they're leaving from here. So, no case could be made against us, and Lila becomes shocked after listening to this. Here Richter listens to them. When Ruth wakes up in the car, on the other hand, she notices that both officers have died. By taking his mother, that man has gone somewhere. Meanwhile, she sees that man inside mirror. He was ripping his mother's skin away from her face. Ruth tries to take help from the radio. 
The skin from his mother's face has been removed by that gigantic man. He puts his mother's face on his own. That giant man turned out to be the same Leatherface. When Ruth sees everything, she broadcasts it on the radio. Herb listens to everything and is shocked by what he hears. The officer is still alive, as Ruth discovers. She tries to enlist his help, but Leatherface arrives. Ruth tries to help her by pretending to be faint. Ruth tries to flee from the situation. Leatherface, however, appears in front of her. After holding her neck, he slices his belly, and Ruth dies as well. Later, Leatherface returns to the town to exact his mother's revenge. When Melody was about to go with her sister, Richter began to take out the car keys. Dante asks why he is acting in this manner. Richter claims you killed Mrs. McCumber, and he wants to see if the property belongs to her, where she lived. Dante returns to the bus after hearing this to double-check the property's papers. However, Dante was unable to locate the property's papers. Melody believes that this property most likely belongs to the elderly lady after hearing this. They've also made a mistake. Dante tells Melody it is impossible. Herb, on the other hand, contacts Sally. He informs her that Leatherface has returned. After hearing this, Sally decides to take revenge on him. She keeps many guns and weapons in her car and sees the pictures of her friends later, who were murdered by Leatherface. On the other side, Dante and Melody go to Mrs. McCumber's house to find the property papers. Later on, Melody finds a cash chest of Mrs. McCumber that contained the property papers. After watching the papers, Melody understand that Mrs. McCumber wasn't lying. Rather, this property belonged to her. Meanwhile, she hears a movement. Dante goes towards the kitchen after following that voice. When he notices Leatherface behind him, he becomes quite afraid after watching him. Leatherface cuts Dante's neck as a result it starts to bleed abundantly. Melody sees Leatherface when she gets downstairs. To hide, she goes into Mrs. McCumber's cupboard. In memory of his mother, he applies makeup to her face. When Leatherface looks out the window and sees a lot of people, he rags. He decides to murder them. Meanwhile, Melody tries to flee, but Leatherface re-enters the room. Melody hides under the bed. Leatherface takes the hammer and proceeds to strike the hammer against the wall. Dante, on the other hand, was still alive and woke up by the noise. He rushes out of the home and Richter notices him. He becomes shocked when he sees Dante in such a state. He inquires of Dante as to who is responsible for everything. Before he can tell him anything, Dante passes away. Richter runs into the house and grabs the weapon. He asks Catherine to contact the police. Leatherface has smashed the wall and hidden his chainsaw behind it. He starts his chainsaw by keeping the chainsaw on the ground. Meanwhile, Richter arrives and begins fighting with a Leatherface. However, when Leatherface hits with his hammer on his feet, his feet break. Later, Leatherface throws him in the window, causing his face to bleed. He falls after fainting. Meanwhile, he notices Melody, who is hiding under the bed. He pulls out keys from his pocket, allowing Melody to flee. Meanwhile, Leatherface hits the hammer on Richter's head and he dies as a result. On the other side, when Sally reaches Texas, she sees the same car on her way. That had officer's dead bodies and she finds the dead body of Leatherface's mother, whose face was cut, and after seeing it, she realizes it was done by Leatherface. She rushes to kill him in that town. On the other hand, everyone on the bus was seated. When Lila talks about getting off the bus, Catherine stops her. Lila refuses to listen to her and rushes to find Melody by opening the bus door. She comes across Dante's dead body on the way and is shocked. Melody, on the other hand, tries to flee after getting the keys. However, Leatherface notices her running and slams his hammer down on her. As a result, she falls and he begins to kill Melody with his chainsaw. Now Melody tries to escape through an underground way, but Leatherface starts his chainsaw on the floor. So, he could kill Melody. Melody hides and Leatherface begins to track her down. Melody hears his sister's voice calling her. She begins to cry after hearing her sister sobbing and Leatherface listens. Lila saves her after Leatherface starts his chainsaw underground. Melody is taken out after she breaks the window. Both rush into the bus and Melody hands over the keys to the driver and say to move hurriedly. When the driver begins to drive, he notices Leatherface in front of their bus. That driver goes out because he thinks someone is missing he goes out to see him. The Leatherface later tosses his severed head into the bus. Everyone gets terrified to see that. Later, Leatherface got on the bus and began murdering everyone with his chainsaw. There was a man making a live video there, and everyone was terrified after seeing it live. Melody and Lila rush into the bus to hide. With his chainsaw, Leatherface murders everyone on the bus. Leatherface later hears a noise coming from the bus's back. Lila manages to board the bus, but Melody is trapped inside. 
Lila pulls her upside and they both save and begin to run. Later on, Sally comes by taking her car. Melody informs Sally that he is a psycho killer who has murdered all of her friends. Sally informs them that the killer's name is Leatherface and she has been looking for him for the past 50 years. Sally puts them in her car and enters the house of Leatherface with the revolver in her hand. She points her shotgun in front of the Leatherface after arriving there and she inquires if he recalls her. She informs Leatherface that you've killed all of her friends, but he doesn't answer. After hearing this, he takes his chainsaw and proceeds to murder both girls. After arriving, he attacks both of them, intending to kill them. Meanwhile, Sally shoots him, but he remained unharmed. Sally introduces herself as the same girl that ran away from you. Leatherface runs as a result of hearing this. Sally hands them the keys to her car and tells them to leave. Sally gets there when she hears Leatherface's chainsaw. She goes to him, and Leatherface attacks her. When Sally was to shoot him with her gun, her gun jams, so she pulls out her dagger and stabs him, but he is unaffected. He cuts Sally in two parts with his chainsaw. Now Melody and Lila run from there, but Leatherface throws his chainsaw at their car. As a result, Melody gets distracted, and they have an accident. Melody advises Lila to flee because she is a strong young girl. In the meantime, Lila flees, and Leatherface appears. Melody says to him that whatever we have done with your mother was wrong. Forgive us, but Leatherface turns on his chainsaw and Lila again comes there. After taking the shotgun of Richter, Lila, on the other hand, couldn't shoot him since she doesn't know how to operate the gun. Later, he begins chasing her, but Sally intervenes and shoots Leatherface from behind. Who was alive? Later on, Leatherface runs and Lila rescues her. When Lila visits Sally, she tells her that if she keeps running like this, Leatherface will pursue her. She hands her the shotgun and tells her that she must murder him. After listening to her, she proceeds to kill Leatherface by taking the gun. Meanwhile, Leatherface attacks her and, after capturing her, jumps into the water. Lila emerges after some time and tries to hold her shotgun. In the meantime, Leatherface emerges and, after starting his chainsaw, attacks her feet. When he tries to kill Lila, Melody also comes there. He throws her backside after she tries to stop Leatherface. Lila's gun was out of bullets when she started shooting him. Melody then pulls out Leatherface's chainsaw and attacks him. He later falls into the water, and they both believe he is dead. The next day, both sisters sat in the car to leave. They put the car on autopilot and converse, and then a Leatherface appears. He takes Melody out of the car and cuts her body away from her face. Melody dies there, and Lila weeps violently after seeing her sister's condition. Leatherface twists his chainsaw after showing her sister's head. Finally, we witness Leatherface return to his old home. The movie comes to an end here. If you like the explanation, please subscribe and share with your friends. Thanks for watching.